Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I wanted to do what I hope will be one of the last responses to the CBC News piece that was done. I will link to it up here if you'd like to watch. I highly suggest that you do. The TLDR of it is if you go to apple.com, go to support, go to their forum, say, I have an issue with this type of iPhone. I'm curious if there's a way to get the data off of it, if possible, not even just from you, but from anybody. They will say no. Not, not only will they not refer you to any sort of data recovery specialist, they'll say no, it's not possible. If somebody says it's possible, they're lying to you or burning their money, it, it can't be done. And the issue that many people had was that when they go to apple.com for the support, they are told a lie. And because it's coming from an official looking website, they will believe that lie, sell the phone for parts or whatever, and then later on they'll figure out that they actually could have gotten the data recovered from that phone, that they were lied to, but now they can't because the phone's no longer in their possession. That is frustrating for many individuals. This piece, I think, properly exposed what was going on there. Now. The response and the criticism, one of them has very, very common, has been that people should back up their data. People should back up stuff so that if they, if a device that is put in their pocket that's a computer, portable, glass, thin, breaks, uh, or is liquid damaged in any way, that you have not lost your business. You haven't lost your documents, your banking information, your tax records, all your pictures. That stuff needs to be backed up. And that in 2019, there are many ways to do those backups. Whether it's using cloud services that are dirt cheap nowadays that automatically do most of this stuff for you, or... It's just buying an external hard drive for 40 or 50 bucks and copying everything on the phone to it on a regular basis. The software makes it easy. The technology has gotten cheap enough that people should just be able to back up. And how dare you blame a company for a user's ignorance or a user's carelessness? How dare you blame the company for the fact that this user didn't back up their data? And that is a point that I can agree with 100%. I agree that users need to take personal responsibility and accountability for not backing up their data. And I also believe that a company should not have to be forced to provide a data recovery service. However, that's not what we're talking about here. Now worry. This is, I guess, a greater philosophical point that I want to get to, which is that when people are on a specific team or when they see it's us versus them, when it's, you know, religious people versus atheists, Democrats versus Republicans, uh, Apple people versus non-Apple people, and so on and so forth, people kind of get into their teams. And what people will do is when, instead of focusing on a criticism that is made, what they'll do is they'll look at the criticism that's made, they'll zoom out into an overarching narrative, then they'll pick out the parts of the narrative to respond to that make them look intelligent, and then they'll respond to that rather than responding to the actual criticism. And this is where the problems start to occur. I completely agree. And again, I have been in retail now and dealing with customers in this way for almost 11 years. Trust me, I have had this experience enough times in the past. I've had individuals come in with clicking hard drives where I told them, you'll be lucky if I can just get back your files in a raw format. I explained what that was for 10 minutes. I showed them what it would look like. And they, they said, okay, we get the data back from their clicking drive. We get the folder structure back, the file hierarchy, everything. We just can't do a full time machine backup and migration so that everything looks the same as it did before. And we're not going to be able to get back the application preferences. We'll get back everything else. And they sit there opening their mail app going, it doesn't have my password saved in my email. And then I said, okay, well, what's your email address? And she goes, this? And then I say, okay, what's your password? I don't know. Who's your email provider? I'll help you out with it. I don't know. No. And this person actually started crying in my store. This experience, when you deal with customers in technology and retail, you're going to have a lot of these where not only do they not take responsibility for it, they will actually blame you after you recover the data from their clicking hard drive, which they never backed up, and their computer that's clearly beaten and treated like garbage for not being able to get back that extra 10% that allows the migration assistant in uh, OS 10 to migrate over all the preferences, all the passwords, all the IMAP server information, and all these things. And they'll make it my fault that they don't even know who their own email provider is. It's sad. I understand. I assure you, as somebody who sits in the front of a store, who's still after 11 years in business, deals with customers on a regular basis, that I would like to see customers take just a little bit more responsibility and accountability for understanding the basics of how the device that's sitting in front of them that they paid for, that they rely on for their livelihood works. I'm with you there. I really am. However, that's not the issue that we were discussing. I can agree with you on that fact, that people should take responsibility and accountability for backing up their data, and I can agree with you on the fact that a company should not be forced to provide data recovery services, and I can also agree with you on the fact that a company should not open themselves up to liability by saying, definitely go to that third party place to have something done. I can agree there. Where we disagree 
is where the lying starts. So when somebody asks, is this possible? They say, no. Is this possible outside of Apple? And they hear, no. They say, what about this company that's been in business for several years, has YouTube videos showcasing every single day that they're able to recover data? Are you saying that that's also impossible? And then they're told, no, it's not possible. And if you bring it to that place, you might as well be burning your money on the official website. That's where their disconnect lies. And I think that most people, even on the other side of the aisle, can agree with me the same way that I can agree with those individuals on the other side of the aisle that it's fucking 2019. Back up your damn data, people. I think we can both agree on that. But if I were to say, well, no, asking people to back up their data is just victim shaming, that would be me kind of staying in my ideological bubble. And when somebody else says, in response to me saying, hey, a trillion dollar company on the support page of their own website probably shouldn't be lying to people. They probably shouldn't, this person who gets paid $95,000 a year to moderate this forum should maybe over the course of three years, being corrected over three years, do the tiniest bit of research to understand whether or not what they're saying is actually true. Um, when people show up and say, can I recover this? Did anybody recover this? And they hear that answer. What's going to happen is they're just going to wind up selling the phone for parts or trading it in an Apple. And then a year later, when they figure out that they could have had that phone recovered for $300 to $2,000 somewhere else, that they could have actually gotten the data back, but they can't now because the device has been recycled, they're going to be pissed off and angry. And that wouldn't have happened if you people on that forum weren't lying to them. My issue, and the issue that a lot of my audience has, is that there is a lie going on. You're saying something that's not true. I'm pointing out that something's being said that's not true. I'm pointing out when that is corrected that people are deleted, and your response is, well, CBC just doesn't really understand the scale at which Apple does repair. It's like, I don't give a fuck about the scale at which Apple does repair. We're talking about disinformation on a forum that's been corrected over and over again over a period of three years. I don't give a flying fuck about the concept of the user should be expected to back up their data. I agree with that. There's no argument there. The argument is that we shouldn't be lying to them. And I'll be honest with you, 100% honest with you, I fall for this shit as well. Because I'm a human. We're a tribal species. We get in our camps and we defend our camps. It's very difficult to step outside of that. It actually hurts the brain mentally to step outside of your ideological position that you have you know, confirmation biased yourself into. It's really hard to step outside of that and genuinely view the criticism that somebody's giving you that may showcase that a teeny tiny part of your narrative might just be wrong. It's hard. I fail at it too. And people on my YouTube channel and my YouTube comment section are checking me on it every day, all the time. It's a good thing. It's important that we step outside of it and go, okay, listen, I th hey, I think, you know what, Lewis? I think you're an asshole. I hate your face. I hate those black bags under your eyes. I hate that piece of shit bubble wrap that you have on your chair because you're so fucking unprofessional. You can't spend 200 bucks to get a new chair, you cheapskate, or paint your wall. I hate the way you do repairs. I hate the fact that the chips that you solder on are soldered on crooked. I hate the fact that you have a New York accent. I hate the fact that you just have the face of an asshole. But, yeah, I can kind of understand that that, that that lying stuff is messed up. And I could look at them and say, hey, I hate the fact that you're defending people who lie. I hate the fact that uh, you are supporting a company that goes out of their way to ensure that their devices are much more difficult to be fixed than they have to be. I don't like the fact that you continuously support them when they knowingly screw you. But at the same time, I can hear you when you say that they provide a more cohesive user experience. And I'm also, above all, I'm going to hear you when you say that people should take responsibility and accountability for their data. You are not a victim in 2019 if you lose your images on your phone because you didn't back it up. You're not a victim. There are many, many services that allow you to do this that cost very little amounts of money. And if you can afford a flagship level smartphone from Apple, then you can probably afford to spend a teeny tiny bit of time or money, one or the other, backing it up. I'm not gonna get into the thing of saying, no, I'm not gonna recover your data even for money because you're so dumb and you didn't back up because I'm, I'm, I'm careless too. And someday, sometimes when I'm careless or I do something stupid, I pay somebody who's an expert in the field to help control Z my stupidity. It's like a speeding ticket. You do something stupid, you pay a fine, you move on. Somebody forgets to back up because they're really busy, they pay the Lewis fine or the Jess fine and they move on. But at the same time, when somebody lies about what is possible, when somebody's corrected over and over and over again, and they make a conscious choice to ensure that correct information doesn't make its way out there, then that's what the CBC piece was getting at. I think that's what Jess and I are aggravated at there. 
And I think most reasonable people are going to be aggravated at that too, unless they are, again, just like taking Tim Cook's cock so far down their throat and up their ass, like in that Apple Insider article, that they just, they don't even respond to the points that are being made. They're simply responding to what they want their audience to think we said, and that's not right. I like Lenovo stuff, I really, really do. If so, uh, but if somebody says, you know, yeah, the, the, the track points in the T440 is, the trackpad on that thing was total garbage. They really messed up with that series. I'm gonna say, yep, yep, you're right. Or if somebody says, what about Superfish? So you recommend Lenovo, what about Superfish? I'm gonna say, oh yeah, absolutely. I would, whoever was responsible for Superfish at Lenovo, you know, like, take a baseball bat and beat him in the crotch with it. D don't actually, I have enough subscribers now that I think somebody could probably sue me if their kid winds up doing that because they listen to it on a video at this point. But you get my point, is that when Eric Schmidt says stuff about privacy and you not having, you know, well, you don't, you're not probably doing anything wrong, right? You don't have anything to hide. I use an Android phone and I have for many years, but when I see what they were doing, which I talked about in this video up here and which I highly suggest you watch, when I saw the, just the, the level of creepiness, the fact that all the spying and storage of personal data that's not anonymized in any way was opt out rather than opt in i'm not going to take eric schmidt's cock up my ass and say that oh that's okay because that, I'm, no I'm, I'm not going to do that just because i don't like the things that apple does does not mean that i am going to defend every single action of the individuals who are working at apple's opposition you know the enemy of my enemy may be my friend but this is not war this is consumer electronics and we are consumers that decide what it is we want to buy based on who is doing or who is creating good product and who is treating their customers properly and i'm not going to abdicate one company of responsibility just because they happen to be on my team. And, you know, again, when it comes to politics, religion, philosophy, even consumer electronics, it's really easy for us to be a tribal species. It's really easy for us to get in our little corner. And I'm most certainly guilty of it. I'm most certainly called out for it on a regular basis. And I hope people keep doing it. As long, I guess as long as they're not too much of an asshole about it. Not that I would deserve somebody not being an asshole to me at this point anyway. Hopefully this got my point across and clarifies that response to the criticism. And as always, I hope you learned something.